All right, start. Well, hello, today is April 29, 2017, and I have with me uh, Dr. Richard Allen Miller, Dr. Ram. Hey, Rick. Good morning. Uh, it's morning here, so good morning. Yeah. Nice to have you. Thank you very much. I'm so happy. I really, like, I'm really, having you on my webinar is absolutely, makes me absolutely happy. So I have very many questions. Um, and uh, uh, I know I know you I know you speak nonstop. So, but if you if you feel comfortable, at some point invite my questions. I don't want to interrupt you. But the main no, no, no. the main um, uh, starting point is our crowd in Hukala is uh, light workers. We are light workers. It's not ufologists. We really speak to aliens through channelers every week and even several times a week for three years we have sp spoken to the aliens do you have any personal experiences with the aliens yes i was at broom lake once at the request of krill i'm only able to talk about it um um uh 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 i can uh 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 i i can talk about the experience but something happened and there's a block some form. They took more than three weeks trying to debrief me on what occurred. The okay. alien itself asked for my presence. I was working in paranormal phenomena, not uh, 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 UFOs or alien. Back in the 70s when I was working in these areas, uh, we knew about aliens, but we are a uh, show except I have to accept him. Yeah, okay. I, I, we knew about aliens, but um, we were working. But the <laughs> no, hey, no, Johannes, we can you mute yourself? There is noise coming from you, Johannes. <laughs> Thank you. All right, go ahead. Rick, continue. Okay, yeah. Um, that, so I worked in paranormal phenomena. I worked out of the University of Washington. I was uh, uh, in anesthesiology, uh, the, the boys from Brazil group. And... Um, I worked under Dr. Carl Slaker, uh, Dr. Wilbur Franklin. I had all of the West Coast paranormal studies going, including SRI, China Lake, uh, uh, Livermore, uh, Battelle, Boeing. Uh, all of those groups were, I had projects ongoing. I had a staff of as large as I needed. When I had a forensics, I could get Dr. Carl Monte at the UW forensics to help. So I had access, and I did all the West Coast studies. The Midwest was run by Dr. Wilbur Franklin out of Kent State. And then, of course, the smoking man, Dr. Carl Slaker, worked out of uh, Washington, D.C. He was in on Wisconsin Avenue 48 years. Now, that's an alien, because I, I couldn't. I mean, I am still working military, but um, that's excessive, <laughs> in my opinion. He, uh, he's dead now. He was my friend, and uh, he uh, is the one that hired me to work uh, military uh, after I did SEAL. SEAL. So I, six of 11 years, I worked out of the Pentagon and was, you know, Northwest Regional Director of it. All right. Thank you. And uh, the next question would be, do you feel like you are an alien? You have so much of connection. <laughs> so I, I, do you have any insight about that? Yeah, well, no, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think so. But how did David Bowie do it in The Man Who Fell to Earth here? Let me let me take this. <laughs> uh, that David Bowie's so cool. That was in 1967. He did that, A Man Who Fell to Earth. And it was uh, it was one year before Frank Herbert even wrote the uh, Dune trilogy. And uh, so later... Uh, Ellie, can you mute yourself? Yep. I, I cannot mute you. Yes, yes. Thank you. All right, oh, go no, ahead. I, Oh yeah, no, uh, uh, no, I don't think I'm an alien. I I know that I'm a time traveler. I just completed an article on time travel, and uh, we are all time travelers. I can prove that from a physics point of view. It doesn't mean I'm right. It's a model uh, on the way I would look at time. I can prove that we are time travelers. However, what I now suspect is our memory of that has been erased from us with the fourth genome, our rhesus negative uh, blood types. Uh, and um, I think something happened to us uh, 
by maybe, uh, I don't know, the watchers, uh, the film, uh-huh. Antarctica, the, what's going on there, that kind of thing. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm an alien. I can tell you that my personal belief is we did not arrive, we did not evolve here on Earth. I think we were, we came from Mars. Uh, my studies indicate that Mars uh, has had uh, previous civilizations like the asteroid belt and that we, there's more water on Mars than there is on Earth right now. Uh, that would suggest Atlantis and or some kind of a water culture where man came to Earth after Mars, atmosphere, things of that nature disappeared. I, I don't know. All right. Thank you. Um, have you ever been to space? You wanted to be an astronaut. Have you ever been to yes, other I planets? <laughs> um, old man DuPont had other ideas for me. And so, um, and it was at that time I did not realize that space programs were semi fake because how do you get through the Van Allen belt and then have children? And I did. So uh, I have had children. So I, I, I've always wanted to be an astronaut. Astrophysics was one of my primary interests, even when in high school. Uh, but uh, here I am. I started with solid state physics, went into uh, plasma physics for my doctorate, and then uh, now I'm in resident cavity osmosis. That's my primary expertise in physics. I'm a, actually a polymath, uh, so I have a number of disciplines. I'm a biophysicist as well. I'm an anesthesiologist, also a union psychotherapist. I studied with James Hillman. So I'm, you know, I have an effective background that allows me a broader range of possibilities. And I can tell you, I don't. Um, I mean, literally. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so what do you think about uh, the secret space program? Uh, how many humans from Earth are in the space right now? Uh, the, the right so, group, uh, good question. Yeah. Uh, Carol Rosen is a personal friend of mine, and she lives just down the street. Uh, she is part of that uh, secret space program thing. That's what she talks about. And she worked with, uh, what's that German name? That's all right. Yeah. Uh, when, when we beat, beat Germany, they brought in uh, this, this guy from Germany. She had worked with him and now does, or is part of the secret space, space program. When Greer uh, wanted to interview me, I declined because I really... I, I can't talk about it. I, I don't know why. Uh, it, it, and this is 45 years later. Uh, I remember when I was down to level eight from like we went down eight levels, and there was this uh, room had a big table with a stack of books all top secret. And I had one hour to brief myself. And I started reading the manual. And the door opened, and I remember seeing this entity. It was maybe seven or eight feet tall. Mm -hmm. It looked like a gray, but was a taller gray with long neck, and it felt feminine. Mm -hmm. I, it, it was sexless, but it was feminine. And that's how it was communicating to me is why I wrote my paper later on synthetic telepathy. Oh, I that's with that gray. wonderful. And, and now, yeah. Um, I don't have any memory of what transpired. And what did transpire was very, I don't know, maybe it's having something to do with the moment. I don't, I don't know. What I do know is uh, it happened, and I have no memory. And when everybody, any, anybody tries to ask me a question, I can get up, uh, I, uh, I, I can get up, uh, I can get up this. Um, uh, don't I, I, worry. Uh, don't worry. You're not blocked. Uh, That's I, okay. Uh, uh, Wait, uh, wait, uh, I can get up. I'm going to do this. Um, I, no, I can get don't up to push it. it. Don't press and it. I can't go past this one place. And uh, it's, uh, how could she talk to me? I, I, I couldn't understand that. Today, it's uh, 0.3 to 3 gigahertz. It's a microwave band uh, with temporal lobes. And I can tell you how that works. Man has another sensory motor input um, in the 0.3. It's microwave. What happens in that bandwidth is that the temporal will heat up and start to ring and you can heterodyne uh, words where you can hear them in your head. That led to a bunch of weapons that were developed after I did the study uh, called uh, Commander Zolo, uh, uh, Commander Solo, 
which um, is the first weapon deployed to invade another country. The United States is terrible. They're, they're the worst bullies in the world. And, uh, you know, we don't realize that until we step back and watch what we're doing in Iraq or whatever. It's terrible. And uh, the, where I came from, Commander Solo is a has three. It's a single aircraft with uh, 368 computers in it. I think it's 56, maybe. It is in a algorithm that will clone emotion. And they can make people depressed to this aircraft. And that's then when they come in with other ordinance and so on. Uh, that's called uh, cloning emotion. Uh, it's part of a paper I wrote. I can send you a copy of that. It's well documented because these are weapons that are, have been used since the late 70s uh, as a way of trying. You can't control another person's phone. And that is what, at least I don't think you can. I, 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 I think what you can do is fool them. I think, you know, distract, like hypnosis, where you can make someone participate, but not make them do something you don't want to do. You can fool them in participating, but uh, like I think people do with TV and, and things of that nature. But that's what made us God's favorite. Right? And so that's one of the reasons I suggest that man, we, you may have a responsibility for the thoughts we choose to entertain, because that is what changes reality, our thoughts. And I can prove that. That is in a new book I'm writing on non-local mind, holographic. I understand the principles of it. What I'm trying to do is articulate it using physics. Now, physics changes, uh, laws change all the time. So physics doesn't have a sense. They're models. Models allow the imagination. I, I watched Star Trek, and I saw this replicator. Now we call that a 3D print. Uh -huh. Now, I, it, it, in other words, our imagination conceives of something, and then technology follows, just like religion. So we have here a dichotomy of what's real. Well, reality is uh, that which cannot be known. It can only be experienced. Imagination is reality. And whatever you can imagine, like aliens, end of days, that's what makes that happen. All right. And that is okay. That, to me, is what is a gift and a double-edged sword. Uh, with man uh, is that we uh, are not ready maturity wise uh, goal wise to distinguish the difference between intent and purpose and purpose is why we're here and uh, purpose according to Alistair Crowley none will say no if you're doing your purpose I don't think a computer can predict what you're going to do when you're into purpose it absolutely can when you're intent Intent is actually what happens at the end of day, and purpose is the difference. Uh, one to the, the real reason you're here. Uh, intent is what happens, trying to do, make them think. One of the things I train SEALs on to make their belief system, using belief systems like a pair of clothing, would allow you to change a belief like you would a pair of tools. Uh, it's not appropriate to be a Christian and go to Vietnam to put clothing back in the box on, on a different clothing. And then, you know, if you'd been born in Pakistan, for example, you wouldn't have been Christian. So why is Christianity so adamant in being saying they're the sin? I think it's beliefs are tools rather than uh, God-given rights. So and uh, our, our fear of altered states, those are also yeah, I've seen a woman rip a car door off to save her child. And to do that would have broken the phone. It's not possible. And yet, she was able to do that. How does that go? Well, that's a belief. Save her child. Any cause that will come to the door. And yet, and so how can that be? Well, ants have a similar exoskeleton form that is allowing them 10 times the strength. How do they do that? It is a concept having probably to do with imagination. And so, uh, in other words, the rules 
of consciousness, not the same roles for all sake. And that's why all of my work is I hope you understand. Yes. Uh, what are your spiritual yeah. practices? How do you do spiritual practices? Um, I'm a satsangi. I was initiated by Sharon Singh. I meditate. I go into internal Shabbat uh, once every day. Or I try to do two hours. I don't anymore. But uh, And I'm not supposed to eat anything with a face or grandparents, but I do. I'm not a very good satsangi, but I'm inspiring toward that center. Um, spirituality is not what you do, but how you do it. And quality for That word in Chinese is called Kung Fu. Now, that's center where you're doing what Steve Gaskin did in Monday night class on the farm. Do a circle on the blackboard that it may not be a perfect circle. Perfect ever. That's Kung Fu. You aspire toward something that is like uh, a goal. Uh, it is not about the goal. Simon says you can go halfway to the door. It is about the journey. And so, had a religious hit just then. And uh, here, but, uh, because when you do that, instinct of your future timeline, right there with the moment, literally. That's what I'm trying to do. Um, did you have any spiritual experiences when you would? Um go on the other side and meet some beings or some spirits or some manifestations of God? God, by defini my definition, is that which cannot be known. It can only be experienced. Um, a God on Earth would be Orca that has a cerebral cortex that is twice the size of man. And that mammal, uh, cetacean, is, is actually firing 60% of its cerebral cortex, and it's larger than man. And so, with that said, that probably is God. That mammal is going places I could not comprehend. Better designed, uh, better designed for its habitat, and, uh, is, uh, but not my God. Uh, and so, I know that there is a hierarchy of God uh, because uh, I, I'm a hermetic cobbler. I, I, I have studied the tree of life and uh, Kether, which is our God. And then there's the veils of ice, pain, soft, and soft work. And that's like Bob Dylan. Everybody's got to serve something. So I don't know. That's just the working model I use at this moment to get to it. Trying to set it up like a like a filing system, and I have a phenomena. Don't know what it means. Try to break it down into correspond supper, and so I I use that as my, my guide. But 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 that doesn't mean I'm right. Uh, it's just. Fun. I invite questions from the audience. Um, people in the audience, please speak up, and unmute yourself. Yeah, go ahead and cross-examine me. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> I, I respond best that way. Yeah. Eli, Johannes, Daniel, Teresa. I guess they uh, they have trouble. I know. I'm having oh. trouble. Like yeah, Teresa, are. do you have your questions? Hey. Hey. Okay, good. I just joined, so I'm not sure what to ask yet. Did you bring any questions <laughs> uh, with you? We, we, talk, we speak about all different things. So when you go through forward in time rather than backward in time, backward in time would be memory where you are resetting your brain to a holographic period that was a snapshot at that moment when it occurred. And uh, that's time travel in one sense of it because you are reproducing the hologram of that moment with your brain. Isn't it interesting that the brain has two brains with a new adult that is kind of like the hourglass going from one brain to the other brain, the bottleneck right there, just like an infinity sign turning upside down, it comes the hourglass. The past is flowing through the future. It's a closed system. And what you're trying to do 
and increase the cavitation. What is the cavitation? Um, it's like when a drop of water hits a pool of water, pops back up again. When it pops back up, it is no longer a drop of water. It is a bubble that has captured uh, the medium in which it's falling here. And uh, it, that is a toral, uh, topological surface going into the outer, like a white hole to a black hole, like one brain to the other brain, like a binary system in a star. Nibiru, uh, let's say, a pair, pair coupling of cavitation pole. Past, present, like future, present. All we have and what we're trying to do, I, my model, is go from the profane into the sacred. Where a moment is expanded to a point of time. That's spirituality. Yes. Uh, can you talk about your books? Uh, what what uh, books are, what, what are the projects? I, I have, uh, right now, I have come out with uh, 15 audiobooks. Uh, they will go up on the net this next week once I get my website clean again from being hacked. On the 11 years I taught at Harvard, I taught graduate level course in metaphysics. Uh, um, so I, which includes so much, uh, Path of the Masters, you know, my spiritual thing, it includes aliens and UFOs, it includes, uh, it was a meta three, third year of courses, it's an eight week course. I taught my uh, third week, the third meta feet, meta three. That is the third year when Dr. Uh, John Mack took my course and then started his alien abduction study. And it was me as a teacher that told him that he would not be able to do this to prove the existence of God. But what he could do is treat the trauma that these groups of people were experiencing. And now I'm seeing other group traumas emerging besides close encounters, being targeted individuals, seeing other group trauma uh, ailments where I think it's archetypal. Uh, and as man is evolving, that's great. I know that once I think of something that I might think of as original, it's not. Because the Nobel Prize, uh, when someone makes a breakthrough in some science, another person in another part of the world almost simultaneously comes up with the same idea, which is the link to earth and fit of what man capabilities and imagination could allow. And uh, this is, so I don't personally ascribe to genius or the idea that I, I believe I am what I am, what any of us can become. And uh, while I seem to have an aesthetic memory, sort. Uh huh. And God what, is what anybody can achieve. And what's your current project? What is your um, what what, yes. what what are you uh, writing now? Well, right this moment, I'm writing Chapter Eight of of the Non-Local Mind in a Holographic Universe. It will sequel ESP induction and power tools and the three workbooks which include work with children. Uh, that is toward the evol evolution of consciousness. And that series is extremely important. I have other series that I'm writing. I just finished uh, the Encyclopedia Alternative Agriculture, uh, nine volumes uh, as an ebook, uh, 10 years of newsletters I did in Europe and Spice Street, and uh, how to do field crops and, and things like that for alternatives. Today, my ideas in agriculture have shifted completely from when I wrote the book Potential of Herbs to Cash Crop and Native Plants of Commercial Importance. Those two now have two new book sequels that are ready to go to press. Uh, the first is called Forest Farming, which is different than wildcrafting, where we grow uh, our herbal pharmacies like uh, black cohosh or whatever in a forest rather than wildcrafting. And the other is called New Small Family Farm for the 21st Century, which would include things like an herbal pharmacy in here so that you have a more of a sustainable life boat. You're more sovereign in your field crops that have something for barter or uh, that kind of thing. 
Max. Uh, we, uh, I, I do urban survival skill workshops with Matt Stein. I just came back from Chicago doing one uh, and uh, trying to teach people how to be more sovereign uh, with the crop selection so that they have uh, they have their foods and medicine locally. When the grid does go down, man will be back in a zoning in some area. And so I'm trying to set up like workbook three, speaking right here regarding working with children testing water. Uh, so that they have a traveling water testing laboratory run by third graders, teaching first graders how to test the turbidity, pH, finally, water. And to me, uh, that's what we should be teaching our children, uh, are the concepts of what's hierarchy of what's important. And water, in my opinion, is top of the list. You have three three minutes for air, you've got three days for water, three weeks for food uh, before you need more food. Uh, and so, you know, children should be taught that as a direction for becoming more solvent. You know, they do this with Aborigine cultures and so on. Why are we not doing that? We make assumptions that are not grid, so fragile. Uh, we just me alone. I came back from the workshop and I we had no internet or telephone for six days. I, you know, that grid collapsed locally. Up. Transformer went out down the road, and uh, they had to fly in a part. It took several days, and then they had to fix it. And so uh, we do not realize how fragile our technologies are and how limited they really are. Previous epochs, one of the studies I did in the military saw sound, movement, damn, uh, change space time. And that was a technology in previous epochs. That's why we have the book of formation. Why the learning dervish, post down, kumba, kudu, can change space time, just body movement. There are, I started studying uh, this uh, Gabriel Rock, the jazz dance, and there's something happening. She does it. And she studied with Kate Bush. And then you go back to Kenneth Anger and his magic lantern dance. Uh, that's why we are so drawn to dance and music, is that there's something else going on there. And I don't know quite yet what that is. So that's one of my studies, for example, that I would be writing about in the Casimir effect. That's chapter eight in the non The rock, the chasm, or venture. Um, Ellie, Ellie had a, wanted to speak to you. Ellie? Sorry? Yes. Yes, uh, Elena from Bulgaria. I wanted to say that uh, people cannot know how fragile the technology is because they do not have any idea for the the new technology and the possibilities of um, of everything. And if we taught the tell the children and teach them, they <laughs> yes. and the circle. And I think this is uh, our life, my life mission uh, personally. And um, I, I have one uh, interesting question, uh, which is apart from this. Have you um, met a hybrid uh, human or a human um, or an alien covered in human body, so to say, disguised? <laughs> have if you I ever have, met? I, yes. I, I have senses that this isn't this person isn't real, uh, but I don't know. And uh, mm. because I don't know, you know, I'm not sure how to respond other than I suspect. Uh, yes. Obviously, yeah, I suspect, but I, I don't know. We have watchers in the film. Uh, you know, I, I have I did a thing with BBC, and uh, these are giants. Uh, and the Smithsonian had uh, a skull, huge skull, uh, that was from 1860 out of Pennsylvania. And uh, where did that skull go? Well, I bet it's where that went, but that was an easy one. But they're unearthing uh, skulls. Uh, and bodies and bone parts all over the world now of the film that have always, including the Bibles, the various Bibles, Coltrane, the current Bibles, uh, been written about as uh, co people found it. So I don't know, though, uh, but there you are. Yeah, I, okay. I don't know. Yeah, Thank I you. Wish and... I did. I, you know, <laughs> I used too. my assistant. 
Actually, I, I actually just suspected, but never, um, never really uh, came into contact with uh, such um, being. So I just uh, I see people watch very strangely. Maybe they are mad or insane. Maybe they are just aliens di disguised in human well, body. But <laughs> you had, never know. Uh, I had an I had a study once where, uh, and this is a metaphor. This group of aliens were studying man because they could not understand how the difference between being normal and psychotic could be measured in micrograms. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the difference between just being here and being, you know, uh, is measured in micrograms. I mean, we're talking 10 to the minus six. I mean, you know, this is extremely uh, interesting. Yeah. Yes. Uh, in my in my book, yeah, I I, I don't know. Uh, I I suspect there's something more going on here, and that we are as a race way more than we realize. Oh, we sure are. We sure are. But we need to believe in ourselves more. Well, that's why we need to work with the children. They're going to be the ones yes. to save this place, not us. We, you yes. know, it's a yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, last question. I'm sorry. Uh, do you believe that if uh, we go in a black hole, we will end up in uh, another universe? It's, uh, I don't know. Uh, Interstellar, the movie, uh, was very close to showing what that might be like, where he was communicating to his daughter in the past so that he could let her know by having uh, what is it, Kashuk records or libraries or movies fashion and yes. like the right library to push the book out communicate to her in that movie and uh, that's number six of, of all time scientifically most correct uh, uh, movies history with you know Space Odyssey 2001 Space Odyssey being number one you know what number five is above Interstellar was Dr. Strange and that is what I just did a comic connection, big comic convention up in Salem, Oregon. Five thousand kids there, and uh, they built me as the real Doctor Strange. And uh, the kids today want a role model of, uh, of not superhero, but yes, people yes. That they can become. And uh, so I drove up in my two eighty Z and did some levitation games. Uh, show the kids, but possible. <laughs> Just kidding. And and uh, but uh, they got it. And now there's a group uh, from Marvel uh, that are, like, they introduced me to a bunch of artists. Because they want to do comic around my life. Like, like <laughs> I, I I have a I have a friend that can uh, um, teleport in her dreams and oh, uh, yeah. she really does it she really goes to the other room and see what the other people are, are doing and she kind of tried to do experiments to touch <laughs> them to wave and they didn't see her so it's probably That's, just uh, astro astral projection and uh and or yes. remote viewing and uh there is another form of travel called soul travel or shabbat that is talking about the lost cord at the what uh, Kenneth, uh, Terrence McKenna called the zero point energy. It is a sound you hear in the right ear that uh, takes you back home to the multiverse. The, you do that every night. You do that at the moment of death, but you do that every night uh, when you dream specific forms of dreams called lucid dreams. And why there's a, a group that would, the Seno, uh, a, tr a tribal group, uh, was done by. Stephen Kaplan Williams, Jungian Senoi Dream Mantle, that uh, allows you to develop some tools that allow you to integrate dream time with consciousness. And that can become a very powerful tool for evolving and uh, evolving to the next level of consciousness. And uh, I'm interested in that uh, because I'm experimenting. And uh, and finding for uh, it's interesting the the aboriginal not as more primitive as you might first suspect. Yes, thank you so much, and I leave uh, the floor to the other guys if they want. 
Johannes. Well, you're welcome to ask any questions. Okay. That's Thank you. I'm here for to try to give you my best <laughs> yes. opinions. Yes. I, I don't. I don't know. And as a physicist, I do recognize the limitations of physics. It is not any more closer to the truth than religions are. That's why I'm part of a called the Order of the Silver Star, or Argeum Argenum, and uh, it's the aim of religion with a method of science. And uh, they're trying to integrate the two like a cavitation ball going into the out of. Our brains okay. have two, you know, have two brains. Uh, it's like, yes. like the cavitation code system. And uh, that is limited only by imagination. That is what defines this current reality. Great. Thank you. Um, amazing. I have to write down everything. <laughs> I, I don't leave my pen down. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, I, I'm watching Max there, watching everybody else. Yeah. I, 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 oh, you can see me. I, I read body language and, yes. and uh, I, I watch. I, I have watch tons of questions and I hold them. I hold them. I want others to speak. Well, you're playing with a little. No, that, that's the signal that I have something to say, but I'm holding it. I'm holding it. So, Johannes is next. Hello, can I be heard? Yes. Awesome. Hello, Mira. Hello, everyone. My question would be, what do you think and what are your thoughts about human evolution? What is our next step in evolution? And, and if you have any thoughts of the spirit molecule dimethyl threptamine if you have any information about that personal information that's my question okay i'd like to answer but um i'm a diver and i was a seal and my ears are gone and so low end i don't hear as clearly uh, his, uh, his, his question yeah. was uh, your thoughts about next step next level of human evolution and that was my question too uh -oh. Talk about the next level of human evolution. Um, where you become me and I become you and I am the walrus. <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah, yeah, that is dendrites. Um, if you look at my brain, and there is a thing called our brains, uh, a contingent negative variation, CNV. It is the jump potential between neurons. It is... Uh, gap of go, no go, and a signal going from this point to this point. And um, what's happening with me now is that I am developing a subset of finer dendrite material that changes the way of the exchange of signals, like a hologram in resolution. And the brain is a very large computer. Uh, Gorse. We have a limited size, crunching power. That's where AIs become different. Algorithms and the way you do what Bohm would call different similarities, similar differences. It's the way we group information. That is where evolution of man is occurring in my body. And uh, I am evolving. And if I'm evolving, we all are. That's uh, because we're all part of the same stew. And that's what distinguishes us from the machine universe that is able to go to universes we cannot. Uh, the multiverse is a series of universes in resolution as a sea or potential of which imagination is one layer. And the layers then start to stack in resolution, like going from physical, physical plane, then you have the emotional plane above it, how you feel about the physical plane. That's why we make a distinction between IQ, EQ. Then above that is level. This is a model. This is not a reality. This is the way of looking at things, where you distinguish intellectual plane over emotional plane where you see uh, one person, uh, the distinction of chair, Plato, the uh, distinction of chair, to a cup. They're both the same, yet we have finally divided one from the other. And that is the intellectual thing. Then 
the archetypal plane, next one above, is uh, that's the four plane. All of these can be represented in Timothy Leary's neurologic circuit as geometry. And the distinction between dimethyltryptamine and ketamine. And uh, there the model that I'm using, I am using. Uh, Ailey, there is noise coming from Ailey. Can you mute your microphone? Yeah, she she got it. <laughs> uh, yeah, there are eight basic. Uh, I su suggest eight. Uh, that's arbitrary. I that's because I worked with Timothy Leary, and I can work on eight uh, uh, as a prime system because it, it relates to I Ching, Caro, and many other systems that we use for distinguishing an event and subsystem of relationship. Sora, that would be the Sefer, the Yetzirah again, the Book of Formation, older system of technology, uh, relating sounds to words. Now, I chose the eight arbitrarily because of my deep background in metaphysics. And uh, I, it's arbitrary. It is a way of distinguishing one system from another, like Mendelbrot, distinguished differently than Julia or May Pattern fractal mathematics. And uh, I uh, chose Mendelbrot as a metaphor, Mendelbrot series uh, in hierarchies of change. You know, when you have a fractal, if it's at this size, the next size is this size, not this size, or not that size. It's this this size right there. And, uh, and that is chunks of H that I did uh, in size so that the Mendelbrot, uh, the Julia, and may form our, 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 our system that chunk slightly differently and lead to different base counts. Like base two is binary, the base three has no primes, the base 10 is logarithmic, your base 12 is a Chinese system that would use um, x other things of that nature. I am not certain what I'm doing. I am. Uh, struggling like you are, you know, trying to understand the nature of all of this. But I, I think the next evolution is the distinction, how we organize information and what we're experiencing. Yes. And imagination uh, is just one level. So talk about ascension. I mean, a lot of things we do are aimed at ascension. We pray for ascension. We meditate on ascension. We plan our life looking at ascension. Of the humanity. I think the yeah. I think the first rule is to train the mind. That is what all saints in history have said: the importance of meditation. There are shortcuts, like brain drivers, uh, other toys, but but they are like shortcuts to grandma's house in the woods. With them come drugs. Uh, with them come uh, big bad wolves. And so you have to be aware of the system you're choosing to uh, use. To meditate, training the mind takes 30 years. I was able to get a similar mind, as I wrote, uh, what's his name up in Toronto? That's uh, Persinger, uh, has been doing some studies in that area uh, uh, in terms of brain of a person distinguished between meditation it's not you can do a bifurcation using brain drivers and uh, reset the brain and have a brain pattern of a meditator in two or three years the problem is you don't know it like a bicycle you need to redo it like biofeedback controlling autonomic function that was something i learned from andrea uparich uh, when i worked at sri uh, the idea that uh, he wrote a book, a phenomenal book, called Beyond Telepathy. And his, one of my other mentors, Dr. Stanley Krippner, uh, was at Maimonides and wrote Dream Telepathy. And so I'm using those models for my own in building uh, even a more solid physics way of approaching these things. Doesn't mean I'm right. Uh, and it'll change. There will be someone beyond me, a child of some kind, 
that will write even more than I have. I am just one step in very small steps, Allie, uh, toward the way it's always been done. I think that, what's his name, uh, wrote Contact. Uh, he, Carl Sagan, uh, his movie Contact yes. was accurate. Uh, what that time machine was that Allie or you know, Jody Foster fell into is a diamond body. That is three books I've written that are unpublished called The Diamond Body, Electromagic, Yogatronics, uh, how to use toys or physical devices, pants, and move forward. I am not an advocate of transhumanism. I'm very concerned about it. Uh, but in order to mine an asteroid in space, you may need an avatar. Because you may not be able to leave Earth because of the gamma waves and so on. The Earth right now, today, is experiencing 19 cent increase gamma rays uh, from the sun because something is affecting our sun right now. And it's very hard on your eyes and it's going to affect plant life and is another concern I have. Uh, what, what's causing the sun to change? Uh, well, uh, Sanford, uh, Caltech, others have said that there is an object out past Uranus, planet, planet X, uh, that is unknown. Is that Nibiru? No. Uh, but uh, it is presumed that we are a binary of most stars in the galaxy and uh, that the Nibiru that's out past the Earth cloud that has been identified has an IR signature that is not normal. That would suggest by several friends of mine, JPL, that there's an artifact around. There. And the Hopi talk about the black, a red, and blue kachina, uh, which would suggest uh, a, something going through our solar system very quickly as a redshift. Uh, but I, uh, I, I'm trying to piece it together. I remember that the Clovis culture that they are now unearthing down near Popo uh, in Mexico uh, had civilization more advanced than New York City. And they just confirmed they had space flight, just like the one in France, Cave of Dreams. They will say, oh, well, this is a caveman because it has a, a bison. But a closer inspection shows that there is around the eyes are a bunch of dots responding for a star map. And that means they had space flight. And the cave further down in France, star map is in first, indicating witnesses. We most likely have been here before Clovis rolled out of the cave. Come to hope. Inuit, uh, which are more even older legends and uh, talk about how fathers and mothers talked about the solar axis of Earth, the full shifting. That is Dr. Bert Boleyn, University of Stockholm, Sweden that has actually uh, uh, talked about pole shifts and uh, what will happen next. I think we are about to have an epoch and a uh, sixth epoch and that uh, man is a type of evolution because if that has an artifact around never, uh, what would that be? That would be like a Dyson sphere. Maybe it is our future merging present as a medical. I don't know. I find it all very interesting. Uh, dimension wise, uh, if the humanity ascends and shifts to the dimension of the aliens, what is different about their dimension? So the 4D, 3D, 4 density, 3rd density, do you know anything well, about your brain, Yeah, your brain is a four dimensional hologram of five space, which one of the solutions of that model would suggest that if you could go to different places in the brain, like meditation, training the mind, you could change the movie. That's what I'm writing about now. So, and, uh, so do you expect the humanity to shift? So we think that the ascension is a shift to the next dimensionality. What? That's one. Yeah. How, how would it? How would the life change because of that? Well, immortality is uh, right out of the gate. Uh, one option uh, where 
time is not real and uh, space is not real. That's like a quantum mechanical system where everything is measured in space time. Uh, and a holographic model uh, that now you know, everything is information where everything's at a point. This suggests a hierarchy of model systems that we currently use with string theory and quantum mechanics. And I'm going to suggest rock the Casimir chapter that we're now going to move into membrane physics uh, with uh, alternate universes colliding between each other. That would suggest uh, the next evolution in mathematics, not theory, KNOT. And probably Kaufman's work uh, dealing with uh, plasmas being twisted in certain specific kinds of knots and the ability of uh, how a bowling is different than a slip knot. And, and what you'll find is that there is a whole nother level of options uh, going in five space. And uh, five space meaning all are correct and are permissible. And that's another degree of freedom. Of course, string theory and M theory suggest we have at least 10 and possibly 11 to unite them all. Uh, but not theory now uh, open all new realm of possibilities that are, quote, unimaginable. We will become what we imagine our God is. That's only happening. Now, uh, I don't know. All right. Uh, uh, there is this, uh, uh, you know, we have the argument that is the telepathy necessary for the shift? For the humanity to evolve, do we need to develop telepathy? Or maybe we can evolve without the telepathy? We, we already have telepathy. Uh, that's instinct. That's the thinking with the gut, the enteric nervous system. We already have that. That's a future timeline in a closed system talking to them. I confirm we already have that. We already have that. And, and uh, uh, we, 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 we're going to get something that we cannot imagine at this moment. That is what is the next stage of imagination. And so... Uh, it's like that new movie that is put out called The Discovery with uh, uh, who does the fly fishing guy? That's uh, what's his name? Oh, shoot. I see what's happening to me as I get so scattered in my thoughts. That's There's right. a new movie out by, called The Discovery. It is uh, about we discover that we don't go to heaven or hell when we die. We actually go someplace more real than here. And uh, that is not Paul Newman. What is the other one? I can't, I can't think of his name now. He has a river run. Uh, the movie River Run. And, and uh, that guy has a new movie out called The Discovery. And uh, people are committing suicide, massive suicide, because he wants to be here. Um, I believe i'm sorry uh, the, another problem which you know the futuristic problem is that all political economical systems fail on earth no matter well, what economy we try it is g becoming hijacked by negatives uh yeah. so how do you see the future of humanity to become more hu hu humanistic that's uh Seabrook Institute and Dr. Carl, uh, Dr. Stanley Krippner, uh, humanistic psychology. I think um, we're going to find we move to a more archetypal system um, where we make a distinction between humanity and other races, uh, other 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 black form. Uh, I think black food that's <laughs> thriving in Fukushima and uh, Chernobyl is probably from black center. We've been invaded. Uh, I'm just kidding. It is attacking everything. Uh, it's in everything. Now. And uh, there are uh, tegritites and other kinds of life forms on here on Earth that are way, way survival oriented than that. Uh, I think that when we move to another level of consciousness, we assume different levels of relationships. And uh, I don't know that man is perfect thing there is, because I think there are life forms that are way more than us, like God. Uh, but, but I don't know that. I just, that's the model. I'm 
still be, I don't know, functional with my like reality, my physical plane. I, I, I don't know. I, you see, uh, we are trying different communities, and uh, there is lack of trust, basically, and there is uh, deception everywhere. Yeah. Tribes. Yeah, that's called tribes, uh, where we group in current beliefs. That's what religion does. It's fellowship to help you reinforce uh, your value of, of certain values. Different values are also permissible, and that's probably why a lot of marriages break up, because most of us seek uh, a woman, like I seek a woman that would most reflect inner woman myself, androgyny, and that when finding someone think what happens is changes the rules, and so our values might change. And when they do, that's where conflict occurs because that person is no longer reflecting the inner woman itself, masculine. Uh, and that's uh, again James Hellman and his work with anima, anima, uh, how they're quite different. They're not equal up to bisexuality. Uh, they're quite different, and uh, uh, that's an interesting reason why. One of the texts I require all of my students in the past that they read Esther Harding, Way of All Women, distinguish women have qualities men do not, and even in the bisexuality. That's the illusion mysteries of, of women at the temple that see her matriarchal form and Jesuit or patriarch Chinese, for example, very old culture. And yet, they have 12 words. Three phone can make a distinction. I love. And yet, not a single one. There isn't a single one that has a concept of love. There is so, another question coming about dimethyltryptamine, DMT, implants. Oh, implants. Well, um, even when I was in anesthesiology, we had a, a bio API that could be delivered in water and with site selector. That was in the 70s. So I'm certain there's all kinds of things going on, not yet aware of. Um, that was something we did out of anesthesiology. The guy in the lab next to me, his name is, ended up going to Yale, he did the, all the chip implant thing. Delgado. Delgado was in the lab next to me doing chip implants uh, in the early 70s before he went to Yale. And uh, the, we, Jerry Pollack was my lead at that time, 1970. And he uh, has writ recently written on the fourth phase of water. I think that water is a more important concept, and I deal with that in Chapter 6, uh, concept of structured water, memory one, uh, it is six zero more efficient than our current bid zone of gallium arsenic. Check some error figure. Call it the physical. I, I think that there is a 3.2 ounce weight loss in the body at the point of death. And I'm going to quote to Roger Penrose, for instance, as, as my, one of my teachers, of course, that talked about Structured water inside a tubule. It is that is most likely that is a physical reflection of what the soul is in a higher form, dealing with structured water inside a tubule, and it leaves the body. And that that weight loss occurs at sleep, in certain kinds of sleep. It occurs at hydration. There's other things you see it with that. Injection soul travel that I talked about in Chavez, uh, S H A B D. Uh, uh, you see it in near death experiences. Everybody, Kubler Ross, and others that would have a similar accounting of what happens at some death. Ordo the doll is uh, the Tibetan to the dead. We'll talk about the last grand illusion. I think Zen Gardner and others have written about that. So they talk about. At the moment of death, you have a choice. You either have your friend, uh, ball waiting at the tunnel, or you have the light. blue light, how you get off the wheel, literally. Oh my gosh, there's a whole bunch of people. 
all ask questions? Christine, did you bring any questions today? Well, no, I haven't seen any on my, on my, <laughs> on my, I am overwhelmed with people wanting to know. And candidly, I really don't know. What I do is create models that allow me to have doors accessible, you know, imaginary doors, uh, uh, you know, like going from a quantum mechanical model to a holographic model allows me to have the option of changing gives me a sense of what my universe is about or to yours, how I can relate to your membrane I think that would be best for two interforming with each other as they glide between each other and they're creating another inner universe that is the relationship between mine and yours and how we interface with each other to create something. That's what Buckminster Fuller called synergy. That's another book I'm writing uh, called the, 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 uh, what was it? the Marshall Paper. Bob Marshall was an idiot savant, and I'm a functioning savant. I draw, I hum, and I bob, I draw. I, I, but I was socially trained to be more functioning at this universe. And uh, uh, Buck hired me uh, uh, to, 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 to translate to my wife, my own. Uh, uh, this Bob Marshall was an idiot the one that came up with the buckyball and the whole concept of the vector equilibrium matrix. And that's another book, Marshall Paper, and how Bob Marshall created mathematics that has now led us to fullerene and the relationship with C60 or C20 carbon uh, in the buckyball. And uh, how that forms system now brings to use the space bridge where we have a substance 100 times longer than diamond. And if one of the buckets, notice I have a little grid, this grid right here, right here uh, is 1.4 nanometers. And that is just the width of the in exclusion zone piece of water, which is 8302 hydrogen peroxide at the leading edge on a wave of that molecule. Now, once that's in there, what that forms is an antioxidant super antioxidant for the Ukrainians. Uh, I think they did something in the area as well, watch I'm sure, on uh, giving lethal doses of radiation to rats, 95% recovery because it's fuller. However, if, if instead you put exclusion zone and put curing, now you have fullerene, neutron, fullerene, fusion, possibly That fullerene, uh, it could be used in some kind of level. I watch, building seven, I watch 670 steel girder in full frequency. So, only one thing in nature. Uh, and so, how did that work? I think that was a Mossad weapon given to the United States as a controlled thermonuclear attack. Weapon. They are now deploying a Gaza, Milan Heights, Russia. These are neutrons. I don't know that. This is what my physics says. That would be headed with teleportation laser. Lockheed has like that, that trigger. That's my little protest to them trying to reach my heart. All right. We are running out of time. Uh, Elliot, did you want to say something? I just wanted to say I am a big fan of, of yours from today. And um, I hope we will uh, use our telepathy and uh, all the knowledge we have until now to co-create uh, in, in um, uh, how they call it, the Christ, uh, the Christ, um, uh, the Christ, the uh, Christ, Together, that's above us. Uh, Let me summarize it by Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Teach your children well. Yes. Exactly. They are the ones that learn how to be pedophiles, mass murderers, and weird people. They learned it 
parents. Yes. And, and you must teach your children well. That's me, my opinion. Thank you very much, Rick. And uh, I hope you will do another webinar uh, soon. Oh, sure. I, I, it's fun. I, I, I like this. I like to talk about spirituality. Uh, for sure, this is our birthright. Thank you. Have a good day. And thank you very, very much. It is exciting to be connected to you now. Perfect. We'll see you all next time. Oh, how did they say it in The Prisoner? Oh, yes. Patrick McEwen said, seeing you. <laughs> see you. Bye, everyone.